it's nice to sit down on the drum set and start playing whatever we want to play. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I've done that many times uh, when in my young age. But I promise you guys, this is, you know, this is something very important. It's the truth. Um, I started playing drums, as I said, like I said, my parents in Italy, uh, I was touring playing the drums, you know, my musicality, my music, my drumming, I was born with it, you know, you know yeah, I was born, you know, I was surrounded by music all my life, so the first thing, uh, the first instrument that I got from involved with was drums, you know, and then I graduated as a classical drum player, and you know, I'm a self-taught pianist, um, but it's very important Ciao Gianni, un abbraccio forte, spero stai bene, un abbraccio a te e tutta la tua bella famiglia. I love you and I miss you guys, mi mancate tanto. Un abbraccio a tutti gli italiani in questo momento se mi stanno seguendo. Uh, un abbraccio fortissimo, forte a tutti quanti, veramente, dal profondo da te. Gianni mi dà, sei fortissimo Gianni, un abbraccio a tutti. It's also true that everything we practice, any rudiments or technique or anything we practice, we can orchestrate those rudiments and apply those techniques on an upset. But now, my question is this. If we are not in command of the technique, if we are not in command of the technique,
sacrifice. Don't believe what most people will say. I'm going to teach you five fields that you can apply. Yes, the reason why. You might get the feel, yes. But, you know, the reason why you never give as if you can play the field to a certain tempo. Or to orchestrate, to orchestrate those fields on a drum set in a certain to do with what I'm about to explain, you know, it's about spending time on your instrument, waiting, be patient, and all those things, all those things, for some reason, all of those things are very, very hard for, uh, for many people to accept. some of the videos who has like 2 million views, you know, that say, hey, for a dollar, you're going to watch this. Oh, yeah, yes. And then you pay a dollar for that. It's fine. And, and, you know, good luck. I mean, have fun. This video is more
questions? I have uh, exactly another 30 minutes. Then I have to uh, go back and teach <laughs> uh, after lunch. I have to have lunch and then start teaching. I got two more students for today and I, I'm finally done uh, for the day. So I will have time to go spend some time with family and um, get a relaxed room. So here I am. I'm going to go ahead and just show you some good exercise.
about now? Can you hear me now better? This is weird, guys. Very, very, very weird. It only happens when I am on, uh, for some reason, when I am on, uh... Oh, Pete Rice is saying that he can hear me. The only way to find out Okay. So I guess I'm going to, um, I guess I'm going to, um, okay, now, I think now we're fine. So I guess I'm going to, uh, now is good. Now I guess I'm going to, um, yeah, okay, now, I think now we're fine. So I guess I'm going to, uh, now is good. Now I guess I'm going to, um, Yeah. Okay. Now I think now we're fine. So I guess I'm going to. Uh, now is good. Now I guess I'm going to. Uh, I think now is good, right? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was the echo because it was the echo from my phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wow. The funny thing is that, <laughs> wow. So anyway, guys. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. I am I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you guys can hear me okay now. Can you guys hear me okay now? I, I guess so, right? I'm glad that I, oh, that's good. The great Marvin Smith is meeting in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Marvin. So what I was saying, I don't know if you guys follow what I was saying about, you know, how to develop snare drum technique, finger control, what it takes to really, I don't know if you guys heard what I said at the beginning, do I have to repeat the whole thing again? Please let me know. And the reason why I would like to send this message is because 
that is, you know, if you guys out there that are watching right now, again, if you guys are people who just want to play a little bit and have fun, go ahead. There is nothing wrong with that. So do not watch this video because this video is about, you know, is about learning, is about to find out what it really takes and how many, how much, how many sacrifice, you know, we have to do in order to achieve, you know, certain things. There is nothing wrong with playing the drums just for fun. Please I'll do that. But this video is about snare drum technique. And again, I have to say it, everything starts from the snare drum. If we have a great snare drum technique, finger control, all different techniques, you know, rebound, straw control, you know, finger control, and everything else. And we'll know all the rudiments and the books, and, you know, I will guarantee, I guarantee it to you guys that you guys are going to have more fun playing drums. Drums, it's just like another instrument, piano, trumpet, flegelhorn, uh, you know, violin. Guys, it takes time to develop and learn and absorb certain things. I'm glad you can hear it very well. Thank you, Marvin. Thanks, Nate. Nate. So, you know, so if you are one of those guys that just want to play the drums and have fun at home after a long week of, you know, uh, of work and you want to just get in the garage and play, boom, ding, ding, that's, that's fine. You know, you don't want to watch this video. Or maybe you do want to watch it in order to understand what, you know, musicians, you know, really have to go through and all the sacrifice and all the time that we're spending on the instrument to get better, you know? Then, again, all the technique, all the rudiments. The only way to express, the reason why I say snare drum technique, I always spend time on the snare drums. You know, I could have just like sit down on the drums and play a bunch of stuff and take advantage of many, many people out there that say, oh, what is he doing? You know, I can, I don't like to do that. I don't like to do that also because I got some videos out there that you guys can see the way I play. You might not like it, but you know, but I have done, you know, some gigs with some people. I played, you know, some nice concerts. I played with some of the best jazz musicians on the planet. And guess what? The reason why uh, I believe that, you know, in order to develop a great, uh, that we need to develop as a drummer. If you want to be a professional drummer, you have to spend time on the instrument. Everything starts from the snare drum. Then you can orchestrate wherever you achieve on the snare drum. You can orchestrate everything on the, we pass it, you know, transpose everything, you know, orchestrate everything on a drum set, including hands and feet. Then the listening here, listening. Before I start, I'm going to talk about listening. It's very important to listen. Very important to listen to everyone, listen to the history, uh, the masters, Blakey, Billy Egans, Max Roach, Chick Webb, before then, before, even before that. You know, and most of all, I mean, all the musicians, I'm not talking about just drummers, but listen to the history of the music that you are interested in, the music that you want to play. That's another thing. We have to always be searching for, because believe it or not, like I love jazz music, I am learning new things every day, new tunes, there's a bunch, millions of tunes. You know, they wrote, they wrote those tunes a long time ago. We don't even know nowadays. You know, there's many, many, many things. And that's the beauty about jazz music, that we are, we are always searching for the new land. See, like, for example, I just made a joke. Searching for the new land, which is a record of Lee Morgan and the great Arl Mayburn. Uh, I think it was the piano player. I think so. 
searching for the new land. I think so. I'm not sure about that one because Arl Mayburn played with Lee Morgan for a long time. But anyway, that's not the point. It's very important to listen to everything, everything. Listen to all different style of music. That's another thing. That's what is going to make you special. Like I know many, you know, trumpet players, piano players, you know, drummers. I hate saying this, but you know, Art Blakey, Max Roach, Billy Higgins, A.T. Art Taylor, you know, uh, you name it. Those people, they were the modern drummers of that particular era. Okay, so, and they knew each other, like Art Blakey would listen to uh, Max Roach, Max Roach would listen to Art Blakey, or Jimmy Cobb would listen to uh, Philly Joe Jones, Philly Joe Jones would listen to Elvin Jones, you know, but hey, did you guys notice that each one of those drummers, they all play their own things, they all develop, they all play they all develop their own voice. See, before I start talking about here, that's why I said maybe this video is not for many of you out there because you might want to just learn, oh man, how you play the push a pull? Oh, that's nice. Oh, beautiful. And how you do this? Okay, oh, wow. Oh, there you go. It's not about that. This is important to know for us because, you know, for the love of the music, for the passion, you know, I love my instrument. So the more I know, the better it is. Okay? So this is the reason why I said, if you're not <laughs> into this kind of category of people, do not watch this video. Because I'm not going to be there just like, you know, fool around and say, for a dollar, you're going to watch this video, which, you know, for two dollars, you're going to watch this. And guess what? When I was taking a drum lesson, I'm tired of this BS. I am tired of lying. But a lot of people lie. Lie is about, hey, playing an instrument is about joy, love, happiness. But most of all, sacrifice. If you love your instrument, you have, and you want to become like, you know, a great musician, the best you can be, you have to spit blood on the instrument. I have never met any, any of the greatest drummer in the world that they don't still practice spit blood on a pad, on a drums every day. So if this is something that you don't want to hear, don't watch this video because it's not for you. Not for you at all. Watching from Philippines, I'm going to say hello to everyone. Guys, thank you so much for watching. So I'm going to read some comments. And then if you guys have any questions now, how to develop, how to play a certain technique or push and pull or the, uh, you know, uh, blah, 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 side the whip, okay, or the finger control with the French technique, warm up exercise, whatever, guys, please let me know, I'll be more than happy to interact, meet you all, and, um, and share with you some ideas, okay, again, check out my website at www pepemarola.com uh, I'm sorry it took me so long but I, I just realized after a while that I was talking for the first 15 minutes at the beginning of the video there was no audio so I had to repeat the whole thing because I you know I don't want to sound like I'm um, you know uh, a tough cookie but you know or maybe uh, I have an ego but it's not an ego it's just telling the truth to try to help you know the young and upcoming drums and generation to uh, really uh, become the best they can be. You know, I spent, when I first, I remember, when I first studied drums, uh, and I was, I started when I was a very, at, a, at a very young age. I was five years old when I started with my parents, and I was playing drums with them, touring all over Italy, Europe, South America, 
then I got to a certain point that you know I wanted to, you know I really fell in love with the instrument. I was surrounded by music since I was born, you know. And here it is, you know, uh, where I realized that it's very my teacher. My teacher said, you know what, you need to separate your snare drum away from the drum set for at least a year and a half, two years. And that's one of the reasons why I grew up with. I've been doing this for a very long time, okay? But I was playing at the same time on a drum set, you know, because I was already working. So I developed those two things. I developed the discipline, you know, of practicing on a practice pad. I, I, I learned, at, let's put it in that way, I learned how the uh, rebounds, the natural approach and the rebounds of the stick works. Okay, so, and believe it or not, all this is crucial. It's very, very important. If you guys look at some of the technique of body reach, Marvin is Smith, Smith, he's watching right now, I guess. If you guys see uh, um, the body reach memorial, okay, body reach memorial, and I remember that was like 1990. 1987, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Marvin? Anyway, Marvin, technically speaking, as a musician, he, he's like, you know, played with so many. Anyway, let's not even go there. But uh, Marvin Smith Smith played with everyone, guys. Everyone. Dave Hall and Tommy. I don't even forget it. But 1990, uh, 1987, when Marvin Smith Smith played, and I saw him play for the first time. I was young. His technique, guys. You think, you think, okay, hear this. I'm going to say this. Get ready for this. Do you know the reason why some of the best drummers, you know, technically speaking, that they play fast, they used to play fast. <laughs> Nowadays, they don't do that anymore. Do you know that? Did you notice that? Then, let's put on the, on the, on the, on the scale right here. It was 1991. Okay. So, some of those people that they used to play fast and all that stuff, you know, and now, even, I'm talking about big names, internationally known. And one of the reasons, you know, why they can't do it anymore. Yeah, we age, we get old, but they used to play with a lots of power. Ugh! They used to go to the gym, run, whatever they were doing. They were like always at the gym, I guess. Or maybe play because of the force of power. But the reason why Body reach until the age of 85, 87, was still playing, until the end of his days, was still playing a burning. And Mac looked like he was reading really a newspaper. You know, it's because he knew the instrument. And Marvin Smith Smith, Marvin Smith Smith is one of them. He's one of, one of the few, really. There's so many great, you know, tech, you know, technicians and yeah, of course. But Marvin Smith is me. He's gonna be playing like that, and I saw him playing lately, and still, and that means that shows dedication. You gotta get, you gotta get paranoid on the instrument to keep a certain level of technique. Okay, it's not about the power. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go and work out because I'm gonna go ahead and switch. You know, from uh, <laughs> from traditional grip to match grip, and just like push it, because I'm young and I'm strong. And then what happened? Forty years later. Then what happened? From then, what happened then? I haven't seen so many people, really famous people, famous, <laughs> going down the hill like this. Boom! Thank God they did what I had. What? Thank God they did what they what they had to do. Before, because nowadays they still, they live on uh, royalties, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying? You dig? But the thing is, 
Marvin Smith Smith is one of those people that keeps the level every day. And you can tell the way he plays, the way he moves his hands. You know, it's very easy to, to find out, to get an idea from, you know, just somebody who's going to sit down and stop playing. You say, okay, this guy, he's, he, he knows. Sometimes, you know, most of the times I'm right. Because I see someone holding the drumsticks, the way they sit down on the drum set, the way they, and I say, okay, this guy knows. And sometimes I might be wrong. Because sometimes you see a guy who knows exactly how to sit down and how to hold the stick and nice, you know, look at himself in the mirror. It reminds me of uh, Bill Gosby. <laughs> Bill Gosby, a drum lesson video the, about the blue tip. Give me, give me my, give me my money back. Reminds me of that since I, you know. But anyway, so it takes time to develop certain things. Don't expect that you practice anything. It can be a rudiments, can be a variation, a double flam, double parade, whatever it is. Don't expect you're gonna get that right away. It takes time to develop for the brain to absorb and say, what, 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 what am I doing? That's muscle memory that we're going to. And then, you know, we have to memorize the sticking sometimes. And it takes time. You, you're doing something new every time. So don't expect that you're going to just like, because I show you, okay, push and pull is about drop, snap it. Drop, snap it. Don't expect that once you know this, oh, okay, I got it. This is one of the biggest mistakes. And guess what? I'm supposed to be playing more and show more stuff, but I see that people here, they, you know, if, for them not to ask me anything about the snare drum technique, you know, I see that maybe they are more interested in, 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 in listening what I'm saying because, and I'm glad. I am glad. So what I'm trying to say is if I explain... This is the push and pull. You drop it, snap it. The, even my mother can do that. Now, the intelligence has to how to practice practicing with intelligence, and and what it takes to develop to take this motion, okay, to something like this. You know and be able to play this for a long time without, you know, without stopping. It takes time. There's many ways to develop many exercises. You gotta be creative. See, that's another thing. I was lucky that I had a great teacher who taught me how to practice. And I think that's the most important thing about teachers. Teacher, a great teacher, is not just the guy who's gonna say, well, here, we practice, you know, syncopation pitch 37. Or maybe what we do with the paradiddle. Or with the double paradiddle. It's not just that. A great teacher is the guy who's going to teach you how to practice. Because once you get an idea of how to practice, how to execute certain things, you will be able to get better, to get on your own after a couple of years, okay? Get on your own and be able to figure things out because you got an understanding of With an understanding of, with an understanding of the, uh, of how this technique and motion works. Okay, so, so but here it is now. <laughs> with the left hand. You know, I'm laughing because, see, the question of the Marvin is like, now, with the snap. Okay, Marvin, hear this. I uh, put together, I love talking to people like 
you know, at your level, you're an inspiration to me. And I'll be following you for a very long time. But here it is. Let's now, let's get down to business. What I practice personally, in my honest opinion, as you know, rebound stroke control. About controlling how many strokes we want. Okay? Usually people that practice double stroke roll, but as you know, we can also play three stroke roll. We can play four. Now, from this, uh, the reason why I'm going, I'm starting from this, Marvin, we're going to get to the push and pull and the drop because it's all connected. So if we have a great control, rebound stroke control. Now, not for you, Marvin, but for, for many people out there, the Folker. That's how we need to understand we don't want to really, you know, hold the sticks and make, you know, too much pressure. We have to use, we have to first learn the motion of the rebounds of the stick. Like if I want to play a five-stroke roll. And obtain the same rudiments, five-stroke roll with one end of the left hand, you can do that. Let me go. So we can, we can, once we get this done, to me, that's, that's how I developed that. That's what it took me there. So it's not that I'm teaching anyone here. I'm just showing how I, get, how I got there. But that's it. Now, I was lucky enough to be a very good friend with the great John Morello. And we hang out for a long time. We were talking about the push and pull technique. And it's funny because Joe Morello did not, know, <laughs> did not know nothing. He hated it, the push and pull technique. He was telling me this story about Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich. They used to share a, a studio in New York City. But anyway, it's another story. I'll, I'll say that later. Uh, but anyway, here, the, how this works. With the right hand, we drop it, we snap it. With the left hand, same thing but it's gonna be a little smaller. It's a less of a movement because we're playing left-handed and you know, it's a traditional grip. So I gotta move this microphone, hold on. And please, if there is anything that you guys wanna know or don't understand, ask me, I will repeat it. I'll be more than happy. Marvin, let me know if it's clear what I'm saying here, if I make sense. So. First of all, can you see my finger? I drop the stick, then close it. I'm trying to exaggerate in the motion. Try to exaggerate. So, and in other words, the drop and the snap at the end. Okay, I'm glad. Okay, good. Thank you. So, I'm, uh, uh, so once no, the reason why I go all the way back because I like to go from the, the roots. You cannot just explain, you know, to anyone out there that not us, but a lot of people watching, and say, "What is he doing?" What it taught me what I had to do to get to that point. And again, you know, it takes, it's about rebounds, straw control, rebound straw control, snap it. It's about 
natural body movements and motion. It's about the getting an understanding of the rebounds of the stick. Sometimes people, sometimes people, they can't really achieve this for the simple reason because they might the motion is too, too. Uh, uh, they r remark, they mark the motion too much. But if you think, if you relax out there, you know, to me, a great exercise to set up a metronome at a very comfortable tempo and spend time doing this for a long time. And then maybe play an accent, different accent. Page 73, John Morello, check this out. And I'm sure you guys have that book at home. You can apply the push and pull and Mahler technique, which Mahler is this, okay? See, here it is, by triplets. I'm gonna show you first the motion of the Mahler using triplets and then 16 notes, four notes, just using the Mahler. Check this out. So I'm snapping it, and then I mix at the last note. The last note, I catch the stick. I catch it, and then I apply the push and pull technique. Which is, with two hands, would be this. I don't know if I make sense, but anyway. So what I did, I came up with this idea to use, to apply, put together in sequence, sequencing, rebound stroke control, five notes or seven, and then I'll go back and explain why I go to seven and eight notes with one hand, using, just using the rebound stroke control. There is a reason why I practice the seven notes and eight notes with one hand using the rebound stroke control. There's a reason for that. But anyway, so I put this together with the snap at the end. So. You can play a swing beat, a jazz feel cymbal. Or you can play a drum solo, just keep an ostinato, playing three plays like this, and with the right hand do whatever you want. So that's how I, you know, how I practice my push and pull technique. The motion is drop it, snap it. But the idea behind that, the key is to relax. Don't, you don't have to snap it like, oh man, I have to snap this. Just relax. There's certain things that we can only achieve with relax, as you know, you know? And then an exercise to how to develop endurance, because one thing is do it for, you know, oh, here it is, and I'm done. Oh, I'm finished, man, I'm great, man, I'm great. I don't know about that. The key is once we get <laughs> once we get an understanding of a certain technique, then we have to use. I might, I might you know, I might, I might say something really bad right now. Forget about the books. It's about you. Once you learn, you do the book and everything else. You pursue the old, but that's a great book. It's beautiful. Okay, now, now it's about you. How creative you are with that specific technique, with the music that you hear inside. Page 73, John Morello. Okay? <clears throat> now, if you know the, 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 the exercise, page goes like, the, the, the page 73 goes like this. And same thing you do with the right hand, leading with the right hand. So, 
just be creative with I, I mean I came up with 65 ways to execute just that page and when I showed it to John Moore John Moore was like holy shit anyway excuse my French so anyway here you can you know find the speed the tempo comfortable tempo for you for you out there you guys and with the right hand read the melody See, that's the melody that I'm playing right now. Three and four and ba 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 boom bing 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 bing. The only difference is to work on to work on endurance. Okay, sixteen note. One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. One. That's quarter note right here. Go. Right hand, you play the melody. Once you do the old page like that, then you switch hands and do the same thing with the right hand. And then we get to a certain point. The reason why I love execute this page 73 by, by Master Studies, John Morello, Master Studies, John Morello, is because then when you get to the point that we play the 16 notes, since you're keeping the 16 alternating, then you gotta use push and pull, check this out, push and pull with the right and left hand, try to avoid flams, which is a pain in the bat, guys. It's a pain in the bat, using and try to avoid flams. Oh, oh, I hit that part. So. Also, because my right hand is so much faster than my left hand, I'm a right-handed. You know, I'm, I'm not a lefty. So, I mean, I can play this easy. See, the left hand is playing the melody now. Okay? But with the left hand, I mean, you know, when you, <laughs> when you get a certain tempo like... At the seventh line, and yeah, those are eight lines all together, the whole page. But the seventh and eighth, then you get to the point that, oh, that you're playing, <laughs> you're playing a push and pull with the right and left hand, and you got to be very accurate. Man, to play. <laughs> anyway, so, see, I made a mistake right now. That shows you nobody's perfect. So I need to work on that. And the same thing, all of you guys out there who have to understand, you guys need to understand that this is a lot of work. Anyway, I hope I was able to, um, to explain it right, Marvin. I don't know if you uh, were still watching, but anyway. Was 1991. Hello, Tom. Um, Snyder. Hello, Tom. How you doing? So anyway, and that's you know one of the ways that I like to practice push and pull. Now there's also uh, Marvin. It's an honor. Thank you. I love you. So, um, <clears throat> for example, sometimes, you know, when we practice a certain technique, in this case, push and pull, it's very normal to get tired. There's many things going on when we practice a certain technique. Your mind is thinking, I'm thinking, relax. I'm thinking, finger. 
the, mo the motion. Try to control the motion. Try to breathe. Because that's another thing. A lot of people, they don't breathe. They go like, oh, man. Uh, oh, uh. That's bullshit. That's complete bullshit. It's about relax. And believe it or not, you know, it happens many times. You know, it used to happen to me too, especially when I, uh, you know, at the beginning when I was playing music in the band and I played with somebody, you know, that really, you know, got a, you know, let's say, I got a, like a good name, great name, you know. I was all excited. I was younger, younger. So I was playing, like, oh, man, I'm going to burn. The key is, especially at that moment, to let the music come to you. Just play what you need. If you're playing jazz music, you just need a cymbal right there. Even if you play at a fast tempo. Especially if you play at a very fast tempo. Especially if you play at a very fast tempo. You can't really play tense. No. No. No, it's all about the bouncing. And p play what the music requires. Don't try to play, act. hear this, I have to rephrase this. Don't play stuff that you, okay, I'm gonna play this now because I'm gonna impress the band leader. I'm gonna impress those guys. That's when we will suck. That's when we make mistakes. But if you're humble, and you know, and how we achieve, how we become humble, humbleness, when we realize how, free, how, how hard it is, this business, how hard it is to play well, how hard it is to please the music. Actually, to please the music, it's very easy. How hard it is to understand that you don't need to play all the shit you practice at home. See, that's the thing. I'm sorry, I said the bad words here. Anyway, but I'm sure you guys are going to love me for this because it's all coming from my heart. And I hope those messages, those words that I'm saying, are going to help some young and upcoming drummers, musicians, you know. So, anyway. Hello, Tim, from UK. So... Anyway, what I do, I take a break in between without stop practicing, though. See, it's about practicing with intelligence. I know people, you can practice two hours a day, maybe an hour, an hour and a half, two hours a day. But, you, you know, with intelligence. So what do you do? I know people that they practice five hours a day, but they don't know how to practice. And they don't achieve nothing. In five hours of practicing, they do not achieve nothing. They only achieve the 10%. But if you want to achieve and get the best out of your practice, you know, you got to be able to practice with this intelligence. Relax. Relaxation. Use your brain. In other words, use your brain. We all have a brain. Let's use it in a, you know, positive way. See, for example, I mix it up. Now, when I mix it, when I mix things up, you know, like in between this, then I go paradiddle. I love it for the simple reason why. Because, first of all, I'm resting. I'm resting. <laughs> so, I'm resting. See, practicing all single flames. I will go to double paradiddle, for example.
And then I go back to this. See, playing 16 notes, I was working right now. I was working on 16 notes using, using, using rebound stroke control. Yeah, it's true. The key is here, guys, Volker. The key is right here. Not to match too much, you know, not to make too much pressure is not good. The key is in the Volker and fingers. Getting an understanding, learning me, I'm trying to learn, you know, try to get an understanding and learn how the rebounds works, how the pressure, this little pressure that we, you don't want to pressure, again, 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 and again. You don't want to pressure too much. The right pressure to please what you need, to achieve what you need. I need five notes. And the same thing here. Those two fingers right here. Okay? So, four note for each hand. I play, I mix it. Single stroke roll, double, paradiddle. That's how I practice, like, you know, I know this will take me more time. So I'm doing the same thing now with the four stroke for each hand using rebounds, stroke control. With all dynamic range. Okay, so it's all about being creative and how we practice. Well, thank you very much for uh, following. I really appreciate it. And I was actually, this was a very, uh, it was a surprise for me because the great Marvin Smith Smith was watching and I love him. He's one of my, you know, you can tell the way I play that I, I love him. So, uh, like I love Buddy Rich. So anyway, Marvin, thank you so much for stopping by. And much love to you. Stay safe to you and your family. And the same thing for all of you guys. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, especially in this period of time. You know, spend time with your family. Stay home. Use your mask. Wash your hands. Hand sanitizer. Spend time doing what you love. Try to reinvent yourself in this period of time. There's nothing going on. Everyone is at home doing nothing. So at least I try to go out there. I come out, I go on online and try to uh, help if I can, you know, some, some of the young and, you know, young and upcoming uh, musicians, you know, and um, uh, keep drumming. Music is life. Music is life. I'm 
I don't know what to do. I play the trumpet. I do this. I do that. I try to keep myself busy. I get on the piano and I play. You know, just do something that you love. Because if you spend time and do what you love, believe it or not, believe it or not, it's going to help you to, uh, to send two great messages in the world. Instead of, you know, fighting people, we play music. We fight the virus. We fight the hits, you know, all the hate haters in the world by playing music. But most of all, we get better. We are feeding our soul by practicing and try to get better. I uh, wish all of you guys all the best in the world. Check out my website at www.pepemarola.com and uh, keep drumming. Much love to you all. Pepe Marola here. Ciao.